I almost exclusively operate in a small niche corner of YouTube where I do these pseudo speed runs with like a solo challenge, no item in battle format. And I like to do several runs for each Pokemon. I like to highly optimize them so we can just kind of see how things rank up and make a tier list. If you've watched my other Gen 1 videos and you've seen the tier list at the end, I have an imp tier, I-M-P. It stands for improbable or impossible and Weedle's there. And sometimes I'll get questions like, why is Weedle improbable? And that's like the goal of today's video. Now, this is not gonna be a traditional solo challenge video. Let me stress that to you. This is not a Weedle solo run, but Weedle I think is still polarizing enough just to kind of give some analysis on. So just grab yourself a Sodi Pop and let's just, let's get to it. Usually at the start of these videos, I'll go over the stats, I'll go over the moves, but it's just, it's not needed today. The stats are exactly what you would expect from a bug found in the first two minutes of the game. We're looking at 35 base attack, 20 base special, 30 base defense. Those are the highlights. Not very good. It's bad. Nobody's surprised. And when you look over to the right, that's it. That's the full move list. That's the, everything we're going to have to work with for the entirety of the run. Poison Sting, very weak. Only 15 base power. But I guess if you want to be like glass half full here, at least it gets stabbed. And it carries a 1 in 5 chance to poison the target. That, that's not awful, I guess. You could also look at String Shot and say, hey, maybe there's some like weird little uses you could figure out. But no, there's not. And there's maybe a couple of spots in the entire game where you would use it to intentionally lose a battle but that's about it it just it kind of exists just to bloat your move pool and, and it makes it really hard to get to struggle strats it has 40 pp but if you look around i have the timer going i have the resets going so this is set up like a traditional solo run right now and it's gonna be just like that for at least a little bit and let's kind of start at what makes this run dire and kind of like what it's gonna take to get past this first split so i'm gonna flip over and we're gonna look at some what i like to call test footage how i would normally start out testing a pokemon now, if you really wanted to, you could just instantly go to the mandatory bug catcher in Viridian. You could actually win the battle, and that would get you access to Pewter pretty early. Now, sometimes, a lot of the times, this is a good strategy, because even if you need levels for Brock, you can just black out grind on the Light Years Junior Trainer right before him, and it's just a lot more efficient than grinding wild Pokemon in the forest. So, let's try that. And the big thing I want you to focus on here is just how little damage Weedle does and how much massive damage we take in return. Poison Sting's already incredibly weak, that's bad enough, but when a Pokemon is ground top and resist it, you get a true display of just how pathetic the damage can really be. So as the Light Years Junior Trainer says, we are light years away from being able to utilize this method of training. Also, real quick, I also recorded this in 30 FPS accidentally, so it's gonna be like four times less smooth than usual footage. So you have to kind of look past that because I'm not gonna redo the run again. So let's just, let's quickly touch on Brock just in case maybe you have an aneurysm and you somehow think this is possible. But there are, there's at least one interesting Gen 1 quirk to talk about. Now, if a Pokemon does low enough damage, which Weedle, it fits the bill perfectly, and if a move is double resisted, you can actually do zero damage in Gen 1. Now, how the game handles this is that it's just going to say that you missed the move, but you really didn't miss. The game is just trying to not hurt your feelings. You did zero damage, but you can see I'm, I'm missing zero damage, and maybe the gravity of how far away we are from being able to do this is kind of setting in already. So after some testing, Weedle needs to be about level 16 to be able to just beat the Diglett in the Light Years battle, just so we can start to black out. So that's going to end up being our goal. 16, not really a common number. Usually you would want to get a damage rounding number on a level that ends in 0, 3, 5, or 8. But the extra defensive stats from 15 to 16, they help. And getting to this point, it'll make getting experience and levels much faster, but we'll come back to that. And just to show just a little bit more Brock testing, I'm at level 23 here, so that means I'm still using the all-powerful 5 effective power poison sting, but I'm no longer missing. And all of these extra levels, what they equate to is they give us a whopping 1 damage per turn, a guaranteed 1 damage. So here's where things get a little bad, I guess, if they weren't bad already. When the Geodude gets to precisely 5 defense curls, Poison Sting now goes back to doing 0 damage. And I don't have the footage here, but even if you made it to level, let's say, 28, you're going to do 0 damage. Damage 
damage at six defense curls, so it's a little bit of an uphill battle. I'll go back to the original run soon, but just know that I actually did optimize the Brock split for Weedle, at least to the best of my abilities, but the hard facts here are that even at level 28, Poison Sting will do zero damage at six defense curls, and the much more efficient Light Years Blackout Grinding is not available until level 16. Now with those two things in mind, let's go back to the normal footage and see how I get to that point. Right from the start, it's a grind. I'm gonna be staying pretty much on Route 1 and Rattatas are gonna be the easiest thing to get through. But outside of that, you can just look at this little sequence here and learn everything that you need to know. I have to pretty much stay right next to Pallet Town and after just one or two Pokemon, I have to run home to Mama and heal. That's when you know it's bad. Now the reason I do this grinding here is because it's the only experience that you can get efficiently. Weedle's just, the stats are low. It, it takes a long time. Even a Pidgey could knock you out if it got a crit or something like that. It's not great. You could try to go to Viridian Forest, but the walk back to the center is really long and it takes a lot of poison stings to get through some of those things. But let's not focus on that. We'll come back to it. The short term goal for right now is to get to level 10 and then and only then can I return Oak's parcel and we can sort of finally begin the game. Delivering Oak's parcel at 26 and a half minutes is not ideal but let's be real nothing is going to be ideal for this one. The next stage in the master plan is to grind wild Pokemon in Viridian Forest. And I have to say that blue version would actually be better for this run. Caterpie and Metapod, they're m way more common in blue. They're actually weak to Poison Sting, so this could be a little bit faster. But I do think that pretty much everybody knows that red version is just superior. So I would rather just fight my siblings and be a little bit slower and like it. At the end of the day, there's very little risk here. It's just really slow. You're not going to reset. Like I said earlier, the walk to the center is quite long but I need to get a decent ways into level 15 before we move on. That combined with trainers it will let me hit that all-important level 16 to actually begin the light years grinding and we're just we're trying to keep everything in front of me keep it slow take little baby steps and just keep chipping away at it. Now if you're a numbers guy precisely here level 15 to where you are about 470 experience to the next level is where I'm going to stop wild grinding and now at that point you can just breeze past the three bug catchers in the forest and that's going to hit level 16 and now after one hour and 20 minutes of in-game time I finally unlock the ability just to grind even more that's our prize I do think that this section is one of the longest in the game. Think about it this way, if a pretty, like a halfway decent to bad Pokemon maybe needs to get four or five levels here, it's a huge time sink and it's going to like significantly impact the final time of the run. Now here, everyone's favorite hairy bug Pokemon, guess how many levels I'm going to need? I'm going to need to grind a massive 12 levels. And already from the start, you can see that it's slow, it's steady, but the one important thing here is that it's possible. Now this is a good time to bring up something that never gets shown or really talked about in normal runs. I showed the test footage and for Pokemon that maybe have questionable Brock splits, I'll use candies in a test run to see, you know, maybe when can I light years grind? When is it comfortable? When can I do Brock? Just to see those kind of metrics to give me an idea of how I need to route out a run. And in that test footage that we showed earlier, level 16, for the light years Diglett was extremely close but you can see hey it's not that bad when I'm actually playing the game and why is that it's because stat experience using candies they give no stat experience that's pretty obvious but when you grind like 85 wild weedles kakunas and ratanas you're gonna get a pretty good bit of extra stats and it's just gonna make things that much better remember extra stats in the early game they do mean quite a bit so that's why I'm pretty confident with the final Brock level that I ultimately choose but we'll get to that of eventually and before I fast forward and we get to the ultimate level 28 goal we're about to get to that point I want you to brace yourself for just how much in-game time this is gonna actually take going into the last several blackouts I'm already past the 420 blaze it in-game time and I want you guys to notice just really take a look at it how long it actually takes to lose and blackout the fight at this level now I have to just I sit there I hope I don't poison the diglet 
and I use string shot just to stall the fight, let it hit me. And for the uninitiated, if you're not familiar with this kind of grinding, you want the Diglett to hit you in red version because the Sancher has sand attack and it can take so much more time. You would much rather just take the guaranteed damage from scratch on Diglett, that's the only move that it knows, but it still does kind of take forever here. And I will say that I accidentally did this one extra time than I was supposed to. I'm sad to say guys, I know you were looking up to me, this is not a perfectly optimized Weedle split. And I know that maybe you wanted this to be the cleanest Weedle run on the entire internet, but I'm not going to start over. I'm going to keep going. This will take us to level 28. That's exactly where we need to be. But my friends, this Lord of the Rings trilogy director's cut length edition Brock split isn't over yet. There's still just a little bit more left to do. So you might have been wondering, hey, if six defense curls at level 28 makes poison sting hit for zero damage, how can you possibly just beat Brock at level 28? And the answer is struggle. Both literally and figuratively, Weedle is going to channer its inner struggle bus. And to get there, I'm going to have to go find a Kakuna. I'm going to get rid of all my string shots since Kakuna can't retaliate. And then I just need to get rid of all my poison stings. And just like earlier, I said I made the mistake. I did one extra blackout grind. I make a slight mistake here too. I healed after the light years blackout the final time when I actually beat him so I could have been down like 10 or 15 poison stings here save just a little bit of time so if you're someone out there you're looking to trim down your optimized Pokemon red Weedle run there's a free tip for you but eventually I shed myself of all PP Weedle is naked Weedle is free and we are finally ready to take a look at Brock after all this time I've already said it, I'm just going to use struggle here and there's very little control or actual strategy that I can exert in this battle. I'm literally just holding down the A button and we're just seeing where life takes us. I can be eating a cookie, watching a movie on my second monitor and maybe sipping a smoothie and it just requires no additional input from me, no thought at all. You can see that struggle significantly out damages Poison Sting and it has to be said that God did not intend for a pre-Brock split Pokemon to ever be this high of a level. So we just have the stats to really just tank anything. The main thing that could cause a reset in this auto battler situation that we got going on here is bide from the onyx and you're gonna see me get hit by it, it does a lot of damage now if brock if there was a situation where brock only went for bide it could be bad but maybe you'll be surprised that i actually just easily get through this in the first time and i say easily i don't mean easily i almost died but i don't really care even if i had to reset like 40 times here we were gonna get through this at level 28 one way or the other but i do hang on and we get the boulder badge now everyone, listen up, gather around, scooch in close, because this run is going to change just a little bit from here on out. Weedle's Brock split is a little bit over 4 hours and 44 minutes. Now what I'm about to tell you might be shocking, but even if we just, just close your eyes and pretend for a minute that Brock was the champion and we just beat the entire game, Weedle would still be F tier. It would fall between Psyduck and Onyx on my current tier list. And there's just, at this point, there's so much game left that it's not even funny. It's a little bit sad, actually. I've done my due diligence. I stepped up to the plate and I've given you guys a full on optimized Brock split where I routed, planned, practiced the Weedle run. At that level of optimization, that level of detail is over with. When your time is approaching five hours on the first gym, this turns into a run where you're not gonna play it in one sitting. I'm gonna play this run sparingly over the course of a couple of weeks. And considering that this is Weedle, the format just has to change. So I'm gonna be turning off the time. I'm gonna be turning off the resets from this point on because this is a run that just isn't very fun. Don't do this to yourself. Never play this kind of run in one sitting. It's bad. Now there's gonna be two big reasons for the format that we're about to see. The first is that this video is more or less of a discussion of why Weedle cannot beat the game. And if you can't beat the game, timers, they're irrelevant. They don't matter. The second is that Weedle is, to put it as nice as I can, Weedle is devoid of strategy. It's brain dead. You have one move and outside of very rare cases where maybe you'll try struggle, it's just a matter of if you can drool on the controller and hit poison sting until the opponent dies. With Weedle, it's weird because your level is the main resource and it's the one kind of constant thing that's going to need to change to get past challenges. So with that in mind, we're going to skip over and we're going to start to kind of cliff note the major battles in the game talk about it just a little bit and it's just because strategy is not a component of this pokemon 
As we go over the gyms and whatnot, just assume that I'm doing every single trainer that I can. And my idea here was to go straight to Misty. Staryu isn't exactly clean, but it's doable. But the real problem is Starmie. I'm not even close to outpacing it, and this will be a reoccurring theme in the video. Despite having 10 levels or more over a decent opponent, I can easily lose. And that's what happens here. So I give up, I tackle Nugget Bridge, we'll come back later. Now it's worth noting that I was only able to get one level from all those battles. You know Nugget Bridge, single highest cluster of mandatory battles, but for Weedle, it's only worth a single level. Now I'm going to lose again, and it's close, and you could argue that I could just reset until I win, but I decide to once again do some blackout grinding. It's worth noting that Weedle has spawned a new quality of life change for my runs in the future, and from here on out, I'll probably start making my HM Pokemon just always be fainted so that I can black out, or maybe in the case of something like Gen 2, I can avoid whirlwind strats without having to waste time depositing Pokemon, so Weedle did bring about some positive changes, so there's that at least. But eventually, after blacking out a few times, I do hit level 33 going into the Starmie, and I get the win, but it was still extremely close. And you can see just how many problems I'm already having to go through just on the second gym. Down on the SSN is perhaps one of the most unexpected roadblocks of the run, and it's rival number three. Now this fight is tailor-made to make Weedle's life difficult. You start with the sand attacking bird, it's leading the charge, Raticate does some good damage, Kadabra has a 50-50 shot at just using confusion, and the kicker here is that Charmeleon now knows Ember, and with good AI, it's gonna use it every single time. The Charmeleon at the end specifically makes this one awful, and I just, I kinda have a few sped up battles to show various levels I tried this at, you're gonna see level 36, 38, and 40. And this is a battle unlike Misty where I did reset a lot here just to try to get past. Especially at level 40 because at that point you're basically out of trainers to fight and you have to do some wild battles and it gets really tedious. And it was really painful when the reality started to set in that level 40 just wasn't going to cut it. This led me to level 43 and there's not really much analysis. Poison Sting doesn't do a ton of damage. You don't really have enough HP if you use Struggle. I have a Sand Attack on me and I'm still here. I'm barely going to win with only 3 HP at the end. And it's kind of sad because I'm 23 levels higher than the rival's ace, but it is what it is. Going into Surge, the bright side is that the extra levels make this one a one-shot, and I'm going to start to sound like a broken record, but this one is still pretty close. Without the extra levels, I think I would probably just straight up lose, and if you factor in things like Paralysis, well honestly I don't want to really think about that too much, but basically, this battle is going to be like one of two spots left in the entire run where Weedle doesn't really struggle that much, so a one-shot victory, great. And I'm going to try to keep this to the major battles, but I just have to mention the Boomer Hiker. I knew somewhere in the back of my mind that this was going to be pretty rough, but never in my wildest dreams could I have anticipated just how bad it was. So I'm level 46 here, and we're going to we're going in raw here with some struggle strats. The idea initially was that maybe I can just outpace, but the flaw with this plan is you have recoil damage, and then you got rock throw damage, or maybe that dreaded self-destruct. It was just, it was too much. So we can see some level 48 here battles, and the new strat is just to use Poison Sting just to stall the fight and hope that he uses self-destruct three times pretty quick. And this is going to be a, a test of patience. But to me, looking back at this run, I think this might have been the worst part, honestly. At this point, extra trainers are basically only rock and ground types. And your main source of experience is going to be wild Pokemon. So this was very time consuming. And let's just kind of reveal that winning attempt and just see what level I had to actually get to. The answer is level 53. I went up seven levels for this godforsaken awful fight. And we're not even close. We don't, we're not even going to see all the attempts here. This is the winning attempt. Keep that in mind. He used self-destruct decently fast. And you can see, I still barely survived with just a sliver of health. But all I can really say, my main analysis here is that this was awful. Perhaps the worst part of the game. Just like Surge, Erica's next, and she's basically the last decent matchup for Weedle left in the entire game, so soak it in, let's enjoy it. Don't focus on the fact that I needed to be level 53 just to get to this point, and let's just, just savor the moment, just slowly chew it, because as they say, the good times come and they go, and things are, well, they're about to go. 
We are now level 60 and let's dive into Koga and my naive innocent little baby brain thought that this one it wouldn't be too bad but I should have learned my lesson at this point. Let's take a look at the first attempt and Koga resisting poison sting is the main roadblock here. This is going to lead to coughing setting up a copious amount of smoke screens and when you are already weak you're barely surviving and making it through the game as it is it's just going to lead to an extremely long battle where I didn't even make it past the muck so it's very clear that I'm a long Long ways off from beating this fight but I haven't been to Saffron yet and just overall there's a lot of trainers left to fight so let's keep things positive. This is going to lead to rival number five and with how the other rivals have been I didn't have a ton of hope but there's one huge takeaway here. Even though I lose, even though I get some bad luck on the Pidgeot I can still take it out and then the executor is going to be free due to good AI and our typing so this means I can beat two Pokemon here nearly every single time and I see an opportunity. Rather than scrounging for trainers on the outskirts of Kanto with like level 20 Doduos or just finding wild Pokemon, I'm going to start to black out and I see the path to victory and I have to say, pat myself on the back, this is a pretty great call. Just to repeat myself, once again, Weedle is capable of knocking out Pidgeot and Execute consistently here and that leaves us with a constant stream of experience from the level 37 Pidgeot and the level 38 Execute. It's far better than any other experience you can get up to this point in the game. And you'll also see here on the second attempt, I, I can get lucky and I can actually grab the Gyarados experience as well, which makes this that much more lucrative. So I'm going to continue to do this for quite a while. How long is quite a while, you might ask? Well, let's skip ahead to me walking back to Koga. I'm level 81 here, and with a small amount of luck, just a little bit of luck, rival number five is possible at this point, but I had the foresight just to return here to see if this fight was still as bad as it was before. And this is gonna be like a bit of a turning point for the run, because you're gonna see here, nothing has really changed from level 60, our first attempts there, all the way up to level 81. It's still a slog, there's still a bunch of smoke screens, and at this point, I'm starting to kind of formulate a little plan in my brain. Let's hop back to rival number five and you're gonna see me get through the fight pretty well And this is where that light bulb flickers over my head. I know how bad this run is. I know how bad it's been There's nine candies available to us. We can't make it to the mansion So there's two we can't get right now So I need only ten more levels to max out our little bug So what you're gonna see here is that exact moment when I thought about it I'm one turn away from beating the Charizard and I just throw the battle with string shot I channel my inner Giovanni with guard spec. I black out grind. I continue to do it and let's skip ahead to level 100 and the excellent thing about all the extra grinding earlier all the wild Pokemon and blacking out here for like 35 extra levels on strong Pokemon it's that it's pretty much all but maxed out my stat experience and at level 100 you would think this would be a breeze but and we've seen this before we'll continue to see it Weedle still cuts it a little bit close here Charizard and crew they get me down to low yellow health but on the bright side I don't have to grind anymore so that means everything else in the game is pretty easy now, right? Sabrina's a gym you would think would be bad, but with level 100, some physically frail Pokemon, Weedle is pretty much a god. And if you think some psychic tops could stop this bug from ascending, think again, brother. Weedle asserts his dominance here, and just in case you doubted it, I actually get the crit on Alakazam to get a one-shot here for an overall one-shot victory, and Weedle, it's officially in cleanup mode. So now we have no choice but to fight Koga and honestly outside of rival number three I think this fight surprised me the most as being the hardest wall. Remember I checked this fight at level 81 just to see if going to 100 early was going to be the play and it was. Just like the rest of Weedle's battles there's no real strategy here to speak of and other than poison sting I guess I'll say it now that struggle strats are they're just not viable anymore for the remaining mandatory fights and this is another one where I'm going to one shot it and after the amount of time that I've sunk into this run I I'm all for it. I'm not even complaining. Blaine is up next and I am weak to fire so you might be thinking like something might be going off in your head but having to do such an extreme grind to be level capped at this point makes it not really matter. Now this is going to be another one shot. Great. But I will say it is pretty cool to see Weedle actually tank multiple fire blast in one battle but let's skip past this. We have more important things to get to. It's been an arduous journey to this point, but this, my friends, is basically where all Weedle runs are just going to end. Now, before I hop into Giovanni, and remember that this is the much weaker red version Giovanni, I just want you to know that four of his five Pokemon double resist Poison Sting, so mentally prepare yourself for that, and let's just talk about it.
All right, so here I thought I had cracked the fight. I thought I had found the cheat code. The plan was simple. Get the Rhyhorn to lower your defense six stages. This would badge boost you six times and you could just steamroll the fight. Now the flaw with this plan is number one, I'm Weedle. And number two, Poison Sting could probably have like 39 badge boost and still be weak. I was a little cocky, maybe misinformed here. I used string shots to stall the Rhyhorn and you can see that it starts to really chunk me down, take me pretty low. So I'm just eventually limping into the Nidal Queen and that's gonna be a reset right there. The new line of thinking was that maybe lowering your defense, it makes you a little bit too squishy. So I try a ton of more times and I can't stress that enough. I tried this fight a lot and you're gonna see right here, this is just an average attempt where you slog past the Rhyhorn. Maybe Doug Trio hits you with the growl or like a sand attack. And then you're just at the mercy of the poison mommy with no real hope. And this is how the vast majority of attempts just went. Now here's an attempt where I inadvertently get six badge boost and I'm almost Almost at full health on the Nidal Queen, and I even make it past the Nidal Queen. But this one is a good example of how getting luck early in this fight doesn't even matter. Even at full health, I just can't do enough damage to get through the middle part of the fight, so it feels kind of bad. So after what felt like a thousand attempts, I'm gonna utilize save states, and yes, that pretty much means that I deem this fight essentially to be impossible. Now look at the board here. Look at everything going on. I'm only missing 50 health. I've made it through the Rhyhorn with only one Tail Whip on me, and I managed to avoid both sand attack and growl on the Doug trio. I believe this right here is about the best position that you could ever hope to be in for this fight. And now I'm just gonna start to rapid fire some attempts just so you can see how bad this fight is, how improbable it is. Now let the gravity of this sink in. I tried tons of times to get this sort of luck and now I'm using a save state after getting a really good start to the fight and I'm only trying the final three Pokemon. I reset hundreds of times here, hundreds, probably up into the thousands with zero luck at all. And I really just want to put it into perspective. I never even got past the Nidal King. After all these attempts, just stacking up, just building up, wasting tons of my time, I never even saw the Rhydon in this entire run. And just think about the Rhydon for a second. It has like 300 defense. It also double resists Poison Sting. So it's not like this battle was even a little bit close. I think the only way Weedle ever wins this fight in its wildest dreams is if maybe you could get to like level 200 or even 300. And even then, I wouldn't be surprised if it required some more luck. And I don't really want to talk about odds. I don't want to talk about numbers and statistics for this fight because believe it or not, there's actually a harder and even more improbable fight. And I would rather deep dive into that. But even if you did manage to win the lottery here on Giovanni and make it past, there's still worse things to come. And you might be thinking, hey, Matt, you can't even beat Giovanni. So how are you going to take a look at Agatha? And the answer is I'm going to cheat. We're going to take the flag for the badge. We're going to set it to true just so I can make a point, just so I can make a final point for this video. So before before I go into the fight, I would like to take a look at it from like a numerical odds and statistics type standpoint rather than talking about the typical problems and strategies of the fight like I have up to this point. So let's fade to black. Everybody gather in close. We need to talk about Agatha. So we're just going to take a look at all the attempts in the background. I'm not really going to focus on it, but you are going to see just a ton of attempts playing in the background and I need to set something up and let me just forewarn you that this is going to sound like Scott Steiner math. I'm going to throw out a bunch of numbers and we're going to reach a conclusion of just how improbable this fight is. So first you would look at this number from an HP standpoint. How much HP does Agatha's Pokemon have? And the answer is 720 combined HP. Now four of her Pokemon, just like Giovanni, four of them double resist Poison Sting. At level 100, max EVs, perfect DVs, the perfect Weedle, here's the damage numbers. Now remember, you only have 56 uses of Poison Sting, and this is a no item challenge. Now if you do some real quick math here, 700 HP divided by 56 uses of Poison Sting, that means that you'll need to do 12.86 damage per hit, and let's just round that up to 13. Now the problem arises when you take a deeper look at the damage numbers, and remember this, we're level 100, max stat experience, perfect DVs, we're the super powered top 00, 
0.01% Weedle here. Even on the very first Gengar, the range for a regular hit is 9 to 11. It's already below that required 13 damage from hit. And things like Golbat, Arbok, they're a little bit better, 20 and 21 respectively. And like you would expect, it gets the worst on the final Gengar with the max damage on a non-crit is 10. So with these numbers in mind, you can kind of get an idea of how many times you would actually need to hit. Now to keep this realistic, uh, I'm going to use the median ranges. For example, on the first Gengar, if it's 9 to 11, I'm just going to use 10 damage as a baseline. You have 15 turns on the first Gengar, 9 turns on the Golbat, 14 on the Haunter, 8 on the Arbok, 17 on the final Gengar. That's the average amount of turns. This adds up to 63, and we only have 56 Poison Stings, so that means we're 7 short, which means we're going to have to crit a little bit. So in this little hypothetical scenario that we've set up, let's say maybe you crit twice on the first Gengar. Maybe you crit two times on the Haunter. Maybe you crit on the Arbok. All that's going to add together to bring us a new total of required turns down to 54, which gives us a little bit of leeway out of 56. So 54 total turns if you crit five times, let's say. So even in this little vacuum here, I'm going to I'm gonna spare you the exact probability. But with Weedle's crit rate, it's 9.77. And if you need to crit five times out of 56 Poison Stings, you're going to reach approximately 22.9% chance of that happening. Not too bad. Maybe it doesn't sound too bad, but the problem here is that you're assuming that Agatha's Pokemon will just be lobotomized and just never do anything. And even in this hypothetical scenario where she just wastes a magical 56 turns in a row while your Weedle tries its best to poison sting it down, there's still a 77% chance that you would still fail, which is really high. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's kind of drive this point home and let's just focus. We're only going to focus on the very first Gengar here. It has four moves, so there's a baseline of a 25% chance that she'll just select a certain move. And you also got to take into account that Agatha has special AI where she'll just roll like a random bot from 0 to 255. And if it's less than 20, she'll just switch to the next Pokemon. So that's around a 7.5% chance. So if you calculate all that together, you can start to get a little picture. Now let's go over the moves real quick. You have Dream Eater, which is the best case scenario, because if you're not asleep, it's not going to do anything. You have Nightshade, which does do damage, but there's no negative side effects. And then you have Hypnosis that has a 40% chance to miss. And then you have Confuse Ray, which when it hits, you still have a 50% chance to ignore it. So I crunched the numbers just so you don't have to. We're not going to make a big deal about it. But this is going to give you roughly a 20% chance on any given turn that the Gengar will do something that will not affect your consecutive Poison Sting dreams. Now we've established that with some crits, you can get this thing down in 13 turns. So what are the options? of that. First off, the odds of getting 2 out of 13 turns to crit is around 23.4%. And let me just say this, I don't want to bloat the numbers and I don't want to do this in bad faith. So let's just say for the sake of reason that you need Agatha to not do anything for at least half of those 13 turns. So this comes out roughly to about 7% of that happening. So if you take all that stuff, drop them in a formula, do everything correctly, that means that just on the very first Gengar, the odds of you getting it down, critting enough not to run out of PP, and being healthy enough so you can make it to the next Pokemon, it's a mere 1.67% or roughly around 1 in 60. Now if you excuse me, I don't care to do the math for the full fight. There are just, there's way too many variables. Now even if you look at Golbat, it's got two confusing moves, it has a super effective wing attack that can do 15% of your health, and it has haze that'll take away 12.5% of your attack because you're losing all your badge boost. There's too many variables. And as we go deeper and talk about these numbers, just know that what I'm giving you is a very conservative number. It's highly likely that this would be two, three, four, five times worse than I'm saying it is. So if you want some sort of answer, like what are the full odds of beating Agatha, the best I can do is just do some napkin math. We're going to take the deep dive from the first Gengar and we're just going to apply that across all five Pokemon. And you can get a really rough estimate of the Agatha odds and they look something like this in scientific notation 4.119 times 10 to the negative 9 now if this number means nothing to you let me just translate it into odds that comes out to 1 in 24 million 269,494 now keep in mind like I just said it's highly way likely than this because there's a lot of variables and this is a hyper conservative figure in a vacuum because nobody wants to be up to 4 a.m. breaking down the Weedle fight against Agatha. I'm sure you understand. So let's 
go over some real life odds just to kind of compare stuff. We'll start pretty simple. One in seven adults, they can't even read the text that's on the screen right now. Straight up going outside and just getting struck by lightning and dying, that's a one out of 138,000 odds right there. Walking outside and getting hit by a meteorite, just God throwing a meteorite down and just striking you and killing you dead, it's a pretty wide range, but the highest one I could find is one in 250,000. Going into the Olympic Games and getting on the podium to get a medal, that's one in 662,000. And here's a pretty good one. Let's say you're on a plane and it just crashes and you're in this plane and it crashes all the way to the earth. The odds of you surviving that plane crash is roughly one in 29 million. And I guess it's kind of sad that that's the most comparable odds that we have with our Weedle Run today. It would be really interesting to me to see like a statistician st sit down and give us like really accurate numbers because I wouldn't be surprised if this thing was like, I don't know, up in like the nine or 10 figures even because right now I'm being really conservative and I got it all the way up to the eight figure mark. But with all that said, I think I'm done talking about Weedle forever. Now you know why my tier card says improbable and maybe some of these numbers can kind of like put some perspective on it and you can understand a little bit better. Just because it's theoretically possible to do something, it doesn't make it feasible. Now if you want to go buy lottery tickets or if you want to chip away at the perfect Weedle run, you go ahead. But remember that no one's going to believe you unless it was live streamed. Now special shout out to my channel members and Patreons, the support means a lot. And if it wasn't apparent to this point, this was like something I thought about for about a year now. It was a bit, it started out as like an April Fool's type thing and it kept evolving so it's just something I wanted to do I wanted to talk about the statistical odds of the Agatha fight with Weedle so I just kind of mixed that with the regular solo run so I hope you enjoy it I will be back next week with another video and uh, I'll catch you then bye